Time out with Andy Brown, and we've got a couple of guys. Uh, I, I don't know how we turned this around this quickly. I, I had no intentions of having these two guys on the show yesterday at this time, and it all came together at the last second. Tom Mullally and Scott Phillips. Uh, to talk about something that is really cool, and I, I knew about the – incredible Hudson Tiger teams of the 70s and the the national winning streak that that the Tigers went on and I knew that Scott Phillips was part of a state title team at the Hornets I guess I didn't realize that in 1972 the Hillsdale Hornets went 9-0 and won a state championship and the Hudson Tigers went 9-0 and won a state championship both in the same year. This is the 40th anniversary of those incredible seasons. Tom Mullally was part of that Hudson Tigers state title team. Scott Phillips played for the Hornets back in the 1970s, was part of that 72 team. They're both here tonight. And, of course, Hudson and Hillsdale play Friday night, the 40th anniversary, if you will, of that incredible year. Thanks for being here, guys. Hey, Welcome. anytime. Fun. Decent football for a couple of teams 18 miles away <laughs> from each other. You both go undefeated. You both win a state championship. Uh, Tom, I'll start with you. Uh, what do you remember most about that 1972 season? Oh, there's so much to remember. I remember uh, after we won our final game, uh, beat Morency. Uh, at Morency, we were escorted back into town by the uh, city fire department and the police and one big party broke out in downtown Hudson. And uh, those, those memories, you know, you climb off the bus, you're still in your uniform and you're, you're milling around with all your classmates and friends. So that sticks out. Uh, the, uh, the cohesiveness of the team, uh, it was back then we were winning all the time. My uh, last game that year, it was our 44th straight win. Mm -hmm. So I won't say it was old hat, but um, we were just kind of used to it. And, uh, you know, we didn't take anybody lightly, and we were just uh, had a mindset that we weren't going to lose. 42 to nothing, you defeat Morency. That was the third consecutive shutout uh, during that 1972 season. You mentioned it's your 44th win overall for the Hudson Tigers. <clears throat> did you know right after the game that you had secured that state championship, or did you have to wait a couple of days for it to be official? Uh, no, we knew because we, uh -huh. were, we were number one going in right on. in the polls. So, uh, Explain how it's different now from the way that they did a state title back then. Uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, but yep. there was four classes, class A, B, C, and D, now divisions like there are now. And the uh, championships basically were selected by uh, Detroit News, Detroit Free Press, and the Associated Press. And we finished first in class C in the... Associated Press and the Detroit Free Press poll, just like the Hornets did. Uh, actually, uh, Decumsey, I believe, finished first in Class B in the uh, Detroit News poll that same year. Decent football right down here in Southern Michigan that year, that's yes, for sure. Yes. Well, you mentioned uh, your season uh, finishing off with Morency at 42 to nothing. A couple of couple of reasonably close games that year, 16-3 to the first week against Blissfield, September 15th of 1972. You played Blissfield and beat them 16-3, to and you played a 12-6 to game against Grass Lake on October 13th. Uh, so you blew most of the teams out, but you had a couple of challenges along the way. Uh, yeah, Blissfield game, uh, I remember a little bit about that. I got hurt in that game a little bit, my shoulder, but... Um the Grass Lake game, that was a, had a big buildup because Grass Lake was uh, number one in Class D at that point. And they finished up, finished the season 8-1. and one. That was their only loss. And they actually finished second in Class D. So uh, they were a very good team in their own right. Who were some of the, the players and coaches that people might remember, uh, especially folks who were around uh, and following high school sports during that time? Your head coach was? Tom Saylor. Tom Saylor is a legend. Okay, he won all of those games, and, and who were some of the key guys on the team? Oh boy, yeah, I'm gonna miss somebody here. So. <laughs> oh, where's your no, roster at, right? <laughs> my brother, Dan, I brought my pictures. So my, yeah, yeah. I mentioned my brother Dan; he was on the team, and uh, oh, our quarterback was uh, Brent Moore. We had Tom Ettinger, Greg McCaskey. Uh, there was Mick Curtis, Perry Cisco, Steve Hepker, Jim Woolett, um, Rick Sherman, um, Sherman, excuse me, um, Pat Luma whose uh, younger brother, Chris Loom, is the coach of Hudson. That, that name sounds uh, familiar. Yeah. 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 So uh, I'm Charlie Meredith. We Quite a few of them. We probably uh, missed a lot, so I'll probably be hearing from them. So. Coach Saylor, 
He had all of these uh, incredible seasons, uh, that nationwide best winning streak with the Hudson Tigers. Tell, tell our listeners a little bit about him. Uh, what do you think was the secret to Coach Saylor's success? Oh, boy. Um, he, a system. He built a system in uh, Hudson that was carried out from the uh, high school all the way down through the junior high. We all ran the same offense. We ran the same defense. Uh, I believe they run the same offense, uh, the T, uh, now. And I can watch, and they probably use the same, some of the same calls, uh, T4, <laughs> T2, T6. It works. Um, at Crossbuck. Um, that was part of it. His, he was young. Uh, I believe he was fresh out of <coughs> Eastern Michigan and uh, could relate to the players. And, you know, he was a good coach. It, he put the fear of God in us. Uh, you know, we had some practices that, uh, you know, if we lost, the practice was going to be worse. And that kind of <laughs> spurred us on to, you know, we didn't want to lose. We don't want to go through a practice like that. But uh, it was the things he put in place, you know, over the years that uh, made us successful. And a lot of it's been carried on by Coach Luma over the last several years. Well, that was the, my next question. I mean, what Coach Luma has done at Hudson, they won a state championship in 2010. They were the runner-up in 2009. They made it to the semifinals last year. This Hudson team, everybody thinks, well, uh, Milligan graduates and they'll finally come back to earth and then they, they make it to the state semis again. Last year, uh, this program has continued to flourish now with Coach Luma, and that's got to be really exciting for you guys that were part of the 1970s teams. Right. It's good to go watch and look at them, and you recognize a lot of things they're doing. And, uh, you know, it's like, why reinvent the wheel? Uh, they, you know, as long as it works and it's successful, and uh, they just pound the football and play uh, tough, hard-nosed football. Okay. Now, when all of this was going on, you're winning all these games, uh, you're winning a state championship. Did you even realize that Hillsdale was doing the same thing? Like, were you conscious of the season that they were having, or were you too focused on what you guys were doing? We were too focused. I didn't even know Hillsdale existed. <laughs> you know, we, uh, What's Hillsdale, right? Yeah. Well, you're in high school, you know. Yeah. High school. <laughs> yeah. Hillsdale was someplace you went to a movie on the weekend. Right. You know, it, uh, no, we, I, I really can't say if I remember, I knew what they were doing up there. It was kind of all came to the forefront after the fact that, hey, they were undefeated, and they won the uh, championship, too. But at the time, you know, you guys were focused on what you were doing. Scott Phillips was part of that 1972 Hornet State Championship. They beat Jackson Northwest November 10th, 1972, 54 to zip. A definitive ending to your year to claim your state championship. What are some of your top memories from that year? Well, I think the final game actually was the incentive the week before when the Northwest Band mm -hmm. was playing at Hillsdale College. And we had our H jackets on, and some of those Northwest kids would come through the stands, and a couple of them said, we're going to come down here and show you Hicks how to play football. Well, I said, okay, we'll see you next week. And Johnny Waters scored four touchdowns in the first half to break the state scoring record. And at halftime, it was 42 to nothing. And they just, you know, we just waved at them. That's about all we could do. He mentioned, uh, Tom mentioned that, you know, they were running the full house wing T. What were you guys running in the 1970s? You know, we did a little bit of everything. You have Johnny Waters and Billy right. Waters in the backfield, and Jeff Heppenstall as quarterback. You, you can do anything, and we did everything. Um, Johnny was so fast, he just he ran everything outside and turned the corner and was gone. Billy was a 210-pound tank, and he'd just give him the ball, and he'd run up the middle, and it was like a bowling ball going through bowling pins. It was just amazing to watch, and just incredible incredible team and who was your coach in 72 jack heppenstall so was, jack was, was the head first jack heppenstall was your head coach yep he went on came to coach from at Illinois Hillsdale College. Would, and he'd won a state title i believe down there with his son jeff and jeff came as just a unbelievable talent in everything he did basketball it didn't matter he was a talented kid he and scott resge went on to start at university of toledo hmm. so that's how talented those two were and did Muddy uh, ever come to a practice and give you any pointers, or did he kind of keep his hands off? You know, he, he kind of stayed away, and he knew it. He had to college. He was coaching college at that time, and, and uh, he had his own thing going up there big time. Um, so he, he'd come to the games. If, if he had a, a home game the next day, he'd be at ours. So that was no doubt about it. And uh, the Waters family, boy, they do a lot for Hillsdale. And Your closest game was Battle Creek St. Philip Catholic at the time. That was yep. 36 to 12. 
Yep. Um, that was the closest game you had all year. You never scored less than 30. You had uh, one night where you scored 34. That was the least points you scored in a game. That was against Marshall. You dropped a 60 spot on Battle Creek Penfield, 60 to nothing win there uh, in the old Twin Valley Conference. I mean, you guys just mow down everybody. It, it was, yeah. And we had five, four shutouts in the last five games. And we they had, back then, they had the game of the week. And I think Hudson was in there with one of them, too, on the, in that class where Hal Schramm or whatever from the Free Press would have a game of the week in the state of Michigan. We played Sturgis. They were undefeated. We were undefeated. They had a running back that was averaging over double digits a game, and we held them. We held him to minus 13 yards hmm. for the game and beat him 40, was a 44 nothing. 44 zip. Yep. So it, it's just an incredible group. That, that senior group was just incredible. We had six or seven go on to play college football out of that group. It's interesting to look at the uh, opponents. I mean, you did have some of the old Twin Valley teams like uh, Albion and uh, Battle Creek, Harper Creek. But that you guys started the season off with Quincy. Yeah. You know, which is a little bit different. You beat them 50-8, yeah. to eight, got into the Twin Valley. You have to have a filler, don't you, Tom? I mean, <laughs> got into the Twin the Valley games and the rest of it and kind of mowed right through it. Yeah. Um, now, he described uh, a big escort back into town after his last game. Did you guys have a similar kind of party in Hillsdale after the last game? Well, if if Tom, if it was raining down there, too, in Marinci, it was a sloppy night. Right. And, and we went into the locker room just going nuts. Um this story was started the previous year when Hillsdale was rated number one their previous year for the first eight games. We lost to Harper Creek the last game by four points. Mm-hmm. And it could have been back-to-back for Hillsdale also. But um, we went into the locker room. Um, we found out the team in front of us. We were actually number two at the end of the season. We found out the team in front of us had lost. And so we, you know, we knew we had it then. So the whole team went back out took Jeff Heppenstall, threw him in the biggest mud puddle we could find, and we had a mud ball out there. It was just <laughs> it was just fantastic. And I've never seen so many people at a football game at Hillsdale ever. That that fence was ten deep, the hill was packed. It was just amazing. Just amazing. Gosh, that's high school sports. Yeah. I mean, what a thrill for you guys, and you'll never, ever forget any of that. Uh, Tom Mullally here played for the Hudson Tigers who won a state title in 1972. Scott Phillips, who broadcasts uh, the Hornet Games for WCSR, uh, won a state championship in 1972. All right, tell us about the shirt here. <laughs> this is hilarious. We had a 25-year reunion, and thanks to the high school, it turned it out just fantastic. This was back in 97, but we had T-shirts made, and we had our motto that time was the older we get the better we were so that's i mean i think (laughs) that sums sums it up it's pretty funny but now you know both teams were just incredible that year and it was just a lot of fun having somebody that close two out of the four state championships were 18 miles apart you know the Hillsdale Hornets have had some ups and downs since then. Those Twin Valley years got to be pretty Ooh. tough for a while. Yeah. And, and now uh, with what uh, uh, Coach Lem has built back up there, they're, they're getting into the playoffs every single year again. I want to say nine straight years 11. in the playoffs. I think it's 11 um, now. But yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Uh, but the last couple of years, pretty tough against Hudson. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been a in, – in that program over there is just incredible. The kids buy into it. They start out when they're little. And Mark Lemeron's trying to do the same thing here. He's done a tremendous job over here turning this program around. The 80s and early 90s was, besides Paul Walder's team, the first team to make the playoffs. It took till 94, I think, to make the playoffs. And then after that, got a little better and a little better. We got out of the Twin Valley, thank goodness. They got all huge and we shrunk. So, um, but it, that's... You have to go play teams of your size, you know, and that, that helps a bunch. This year, obviously. the Hornets are undefeated. Uh, they beat Brooklyn Columbia Central. Pretty good ball game, 20-12 to 12 last week. Uh, Hudson lost to Morency, which surprised a lot of people around here. Until you read about Morency and you find out they've got a Division One caliber running back, a real stud over there, and, and they did get Hudson this year. Um, Kind of preview, Scott, the game, and Tom, the game coming up this weekend. This year's squad's going at it one more time, the Tigers and the Hornets. Well, I I guess Tom will agree. uh, Finally, the Tigers are, you know, it's a shock when they lose during the regular season. That was their first loss since 08. And you don't know how to gauge that, and you you certainly can't take them lightly because that offense just scares the pants off of me. And Bob and I have been doing – Hillsdale games for 10 years and watching those games, you never know where the ball is. And next thing you know, he's in the end zone. And, 
you know, that's the way that offense is. Well, they lost to Blissfield, too, 32-13. to So, uh, you know, Coach Luma is probably not uh, – it's isn't sitting real well with him right now at 1-2 and two and uh, not too late to turn the season around. Oh, no, it's definitely not too late. Uh, I have not seen either Hillsdale or Hudson play this year and talking to them, both my brothers who have seen Hudson, obviously. Um, they say, He says they're young. They've just got a lot of young players. So, uh, you know, you can't – it's hard to stay at the top all the time. Mm-hmm. You go through – uh, rebuilding seasons and just hopefully you know rebuilding season for Hudson and Hillsdale lately have been two lost seasons and right. then they climb back and everybody's up. gunning for you Andy you know you're at mm-hmm. the top and everybody's gunning for you nobody feels better right now than Marenzi and Blissfield you know that's the way it is but Tom you went on to be the sports editor at the Hillsdale Daily News and I, I know that you wrote about that 1972 season what were some of the takeaways from from what you wrote about that year oh well, it was interesting to revisit it. I can't remember when I actually wrote that. Um, I know I talked to Scott about it every now and then. Tease him, <laughs> we tease each other yeah. about who would who would have won that game. Right. And, uh, obviously, we both can't reach agreement on that one. But that's uh, an argument that will never be settled. Well, yeah. if we would have played, we wouldn't have been here tonight. You know, yeah, right. Right. Yeah. right. It's, it's, it's interesting. You know, on, on that note, it was uh, you know Hudson was state champs the next two seasons after that, and it was. 74 season that they actually got Hillsdale got on the schedule. I came back from college and they played up at Hillsdale, and I had to this day have never seen as many people as were up at that game. And that's exciting. And that the whole really town is. was was a buzz here in Hillsdale, and uh, you had a hard time finding a place to park in the stand. But uh, it's um, actually I don't remember too much about that article I wrote <laughs> so long ago. But, uh, uh, We've done a few things since then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, when did you write it? I uh, can't remember. I think I, well, I was sports editor from '79 uh, to '85, so somewhere in the early '80s I wrote it. So it's been a it. couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> and fun to still think back to it. Now you guys brought in some gear here. Now there's a picture. Is this yours, Scott? Yeah. That's and what the, do we have here? That's, a, that's when we were young, and I had hair. I had lots of hair back then. I don't recognize you, Scott. Yeah. yeah. Number you, eighty, you, right there, buddy. You used to have hair, huh? Yeah. Well, my gosh, you did. Yep. Yeah. Good looking guy and pretty good looking squad. And, you know, there's still quite a few local people here that were on that team. You know, uh, Tony Veer, uh, mm-hmm. Kevin Pawkin, the fire chief. You know, um, a lot of them have, have gone different directions, but Tom Henson, he's, he's around. Jimmy Folk's around. You know, it's just, it's just, and it's fun to see him. You all have, like Tom says, you have that common bond. This, this senior class we had where, I don't think any any other senior class accomplished more sports wise than they did, from baseball on down. It was just incredible fun. And actually, I thought we were coming here to talk tennis, but no. Nah, hey, kidding. I'll talk I'll talk tennis with you whenever you want, Scott. That's <laughs> okay. no problem. You know, the, those two state championships. Um, the one great thing about winning the last game that you play and winning a championship is no one can ever take that away from you. And I, I know it's a source of pride for both of you guys now 40 years later to have been part of that team and to experience that and, and, and to, to talk about it now and know that you know the guys playing now get a little taste of that too. They've got that in their legacy that they played for a, a team in Hillsdale or Hudson that has won, that, that have been to the top. A lot of schools around – have never won a state championship. Don't get close. So. And, and both of your schools have done it, and that's got to be pretty cool. It is. It's, it's you know, and it's hard to put in a word sometimes. And, uh, you know, Hillsdale's experienced it uh, with football and baseball team re- yep. recently. Cross um, country. And, you know, that's just everything. Is yeah. Anytime you win a state title, I mean, you're looking at every school in the state, your size, and that, that's pretty impressive. Right? You know, you said something off the air before we jumped on uh, in 90 or 2007. I want to say when Reading and Hillsdale both won a state yep. championship in baseball, it's a similar, really a similar situation, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, you know, to have two teams that close, <laughs> you know, win state titles, that, that's impressive. And it says a lot for the area. Right. We have a lot of athletes. Excellent. Pittsburgh won a class uh, football championship mm-hmm. a few years ago. Yep. Um, yep. Hudson's wrestling team has been dominant. Oh, wrestling, you know, that's another thing over there. Yep. Like two, three straight years. The I basketball got... team needs a little work. We'll <laughs> there, but, yeah. well, you know, but when you've got 
state championships on both sides, wrestling and fo- football. That's just amazing. So there was never any talk in the 70s about having a little fun game, you know, just for fun between the two squads and getting together and playing. Well, we both, I think we both had an open date and we just didn't do that. So, you know, we went uh, Jackson Northwest way. They were 7-1. and one. You know, it was a big challenge for us and Hudson had Marinci. And you know it ended up like I said we wouldn't be here if we played each other that year. So, but I mean even fun. even I after the season, God. yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> even after the season, uh, you didn't want to play a touch game or anything no, like that. Or no, it's just all the talks fun. Well, now, if you guys are going to do that now, Friday. Yeah. Well, uh, if you guys are going to do that now, I suggest you stretch out a couple hours before the game starts. <laughs> a couple days. <laughs> yeah, a couple of weeks. Tom Mullally and Scott Phillips, uh, awesome to reminisce. Uh, ball game, seven o'clock kickoff. Yep. Is that? here or there it's at hillsdale at hillsdale Tailgate seven o'clock beforehand so and what when does that start somewhere around five thirty, i think is it open to hudson fans i think too? it's open to everybody that's uh, what it's come for. one come yeah. all to the come tailgate one, come all. Yep. hillsdale high school around five thirty Have saturday or friday night and then the ball game kicks off at seven the tigers and the hornets and a couple of guys that uh, do a great job representing those schools tom Mullally and scott phillips thank you both for being here thanks